All right, let's have a big hand for all of you for coming out. <laughs> Not coming out of the closet, but coming out today. <laughs> Well, I am recharged and really joyously, I've been thinking about this for months, uh, about how I want to change how I teach and, and what it is I want to teach. I guarantee you we will be doing some saucy great language patterns to make sure that you get women dripping and emotionally connected to you. That won't necessarily be the focus of this event, but I, I will absolutely give you that. I just want to take a little survey. How many people here uh, have been to one of my events before? Okay, uh, raise your hand if that was within the last five years. How many here are old time grizzled veterans who came to something a long time? When did you come to an event? Uh, Boston in 97. Boston in 97? Holy fuck. And you? <laughs> Las Vegas. Holy shit. That was one of the worst events. We, I hated that event. <laughs> huh? I didn't get some of it, so. What? Get some of it, yeah, I didn't. I didn't like that event. I had Major Mark was there teaching with me yeah. too. It wasn't his fault. I just hate Vegas with a passion. Uh, now I had invited some people who were going to be on my panel of, of, of student panel of success. I believe it's Itamar. Is Itamar here? And Rob, I believe, was the other person. Correct? Who is the other person who said yes? He's willing to get on the panel. Um, no, I invited, I invited, uh... Did you send a confirmation email back? I remember getting an email replying back, but I didn't see anything. My name is Robert. Robert, Robert you're the guy. Okay. okay, but you've had a lot of, you've had success with the material. Some success. It's All right. been mixed. All right. Is there anyone who's had real success with the material who's gotten laid, like, quite a lot or done really well with it? You can fess up. <laughs> you have. Okay. Because what I'm going to do tomorrow is I have a student from Germany who's made a big breakthrough. He's finally getting laid with this stuff and quite well. So we're going to Skype in. We're actually going to have him Skype in and then we're going to have a little panel of students who've done well. Uh, because I know you have questions. It's one thing for me to answer questions. It's another to have someone who's gone out in the world and started as a beginner. Yes? How many here have been to someone else's event or trained with somebody else? It's perfectly fine. I'm not. All right. What I need you to do is set that outside. Because this is a radically different way of thinking. One of my joys as a teacher is to take people and to completely change their way of looking at an area of life. To completely, not just change a few behaviors, but I, I live for that moment or I teach for that moment where students, I can see their face light up and they get it. They get this as a completely different way of thinking about human experience, not just about women. Now, I want to spend a few minutes talking about the terrible programming that society crams into your head. And I'll give you a really good example of this. There's no need, by the way, taking notes is not necessary. I will, there are going to be times when I do want you to take notes. But for the most part, it's a distraction, and I'll tell you why. Taking notes is just putting you through the same learning process that you went through in college and high school, which I call educational bulimia, right? You cram for the test, cram for the test, you throw it up the next day, and then you forget it. How many people even remember their, their high school algebra quiz? Or, or You don't. That's not learning. You only really get the learning through uh, getting the transmission. My teacher, my meditation teacher, Shenzhen Young, says that a really great teacher teaches through the pores of their skin. There's a transmission that goes on. I know one or two people in, in, in my experience and maybe one other person in the community who has transmission. So to get the transmission, please look up here. And I do know that I'm very sneaky I will be working unconsciously without you knowing it, and that's not a marketing thing. That's a skill over uh, 1991. I'm too senile to do the math. <laughs> How many years is that? That's a long fucking time. That's a long time, and that means a lot of exposure to a lot of, a lot of you people. So I know how to do a lot of things and mark out things unconsciously. And one of the things 
I promised is to do some unconscious uh, trances, trances of learning so that you'll absorb the material. But you can't really get speed seduction until you've gone out into the world and done it. There's, there's a conceptual understanding which I, you need to have. If you have a tool and you don't know what the tool is designed to do, then you're just trying to follow directions on a piece of paper. If you know what a hammer is designed to do, you're not going to try to unscrew, uh, not unscrew, God, you guys are sick. Um, you're not, you're not going to try to unscrew something with a hammer. So it's very important that you get conceptual understanding, but that's not going to give you the experience. And another metaphor I would like to use with all of you is, how many here have a computer? All right. How many here use Mac OS? Their computer runs Mac OS. That's me. How many people here run Windows? How many people run Linux or something like that? All right. Those are operating systems. Operating systems fundamentally, hey, come on in. Operating systems fundamentally tell the computer how to process. And so many of you are looking for application programs. How do I get a girl to meet with me? How do I get her clothes off? How do I get her obsessed? How do I do this, that, and the other thing? When in reality, it's your operating system for learning that's fucked up. It's your operating system. So many of you want what I call performance competence. You've done something right a thousand times, so 1001 naturally seems easy without doing any performance. You think that if you just get the right chain of internal dialogue in your head, that will automatically give you skill. Now, if you tried to learn to ride a bike or walk or run or do anything using that operating system, would you, would you be able to do any of those things? I can't hear you. I want verbal no. feedback. No. So one of my things I'm going to do both consciously and unconsciously is change your operating system for learning. I had a client who was complaining to me, I can't get women, I'm a loser, blah, 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 yakety yak, yak, yak. And I give clients, my private clients, assignments. And they don't like them, but once they do them, they love them. I said to them, okay, you live in Chicago, got a lot of people, I want you to go to some downtown place where hundreds of people go for lunch. I want you to take a little journal and I want you to do your best to estimate the number of people who walk by and get back to me in a week. So he Skypes in with me and uh, I said, how many people do you guess? He said, about 1,500. I said, now, I want you to write me a paragraph essay and answer this question. If women don't like sex, where are all the people coming from? <laughs> so he did, he does, he, they do what I tell them to. You'll do what I tell you to. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so next week, uh, he reads me back the essay. I said, great. Now, I want you to go back to that square. He's like, uh. I said, do you want to do well with women? He said, yeah, yes. I said, go back to the square. Bring your notebook. And I want you to pick a guy who seems like he's really good with women. He's just got it all. He's got the power suit. He walks like he's got the world by the balls. Looks like he's got money. I want you to to go home and write an essay. What would happen if you took your shitty programming, the way you think about yourself, your daily emotions, and you stuck that programming inside of him? What would his life be like in 90 days? What would he look like? What would he be saying to himself? How many friends would he have? How many women would he have? And he wrote the essay. And once he wrote the essay, he got the point. He said, that guy would be totally fucked up. He, he, he wrote the whole, well, he wrote a whole essay, and then he said, oh, that's the way I am right now. I went, yeah. But I made a point there. By externalizing his software, I got him to see it's not his identity. It wasn't who he was as a human being. It's not his fate or his destiny. It's not that he has some mythical entity in him called self-esteem, which I believe, by the way, is a myth. It's just that he had shitty programming. And by getting him to externalize it, by writing it down, that was the first step in shaking him loose. And usually the first hour and a half, two hours of one of my events is about shaking you loose from your old ways of thinking. 
getting you to see the world in a profoundly different way, not just as it relates to women, but how you see uh, subjective experience. Now, I opened a loop. I know where I'm going. I'm going to go back to that loop. How many people remember that about 13 minutes ago I was talking about the shitty programming that media gives you and society gives you? I remember. I do this deliberately. I go back and forth and back and forth because I don't believe the real changes happen through linear learning. True learning does not happen one, two, three. It's one minus two, minus two, 15, 15, three, 320. We don't learn in a linear way. This is my issue with people who teach. Well, first you have A1, then you have A2, then you have A3, then B1, then B2, then B3, then C3, then C4, then I'm going nuts and going to have another drink. Learning and human interaction does not work that way. It doesn't work that way. Uh, people are chaotic. Now, I have this in your notes, so you can have a reference point for it, but you don't have to look at it. I have the metaphor of what I call the parable of the beach ball. I was on a plane traveling. I forget what city. Nick, you can come on in and have a seat. You know, Just grab a seat. I was on a plane flying from, I forget where, Phoenix or somewhere back to L.A., so let me see if I can get the blocking right. I was sitting on the aisle. There was a woman sitting here. And then over here on the, uh, at the end of the aisle was her fiancé. Because you could see they were walking together. And they weren't sitting together. And they were doing that disgusting, right, in front. They were leaning around uh, going, booby, sooby, booby, dooby, doo, <laughs> cooby, ruby. And sitting on the aisle actually was a very attractive uh, blonde woman, about maybe 30, 31. So the scooby wooby booby there, and there was scooby wooby lovey dovey kiss kiss, and then I go, fuck, I'm not going to take this out the flight. Um, so I forget how exactly did I do it? I don't remember. Um, no, maybe I, I don't remember, but I said actually scooby dooby wooby wooby was over there, so it was even worse. Because they were taught. So I said to the lady sitting here, I said, listen, once we reach altitude and we can take our seatbelts off, I'm going to uh, get them to change seats and so they're not scooby dooby doobing. I'm going to get, I'm going to give, um, I'm going to arrange it so the blonde girl comes over here and you can sit next to your scooby dooby wooby booby. She said, hi. And I said, and by the end of the flight, I'll have the blonde girl's phone number. <laughs> she said, how are you going to do that? I said, trust me. <laughs> so sure enough, we get to altitude. I turned to Scooby Booby Wooby Wooby. I said, how would you like to sit next to your, the guy you're in love with? She said, sure. So I said, uh, hey, Sporty, we're going to change seats. So the Sporty comes sit next to me. She sits there, Scooby Dooby Wooby, thank goodness. And Sporty takes out a, uh, some book, a notebook and She's got equations there and images. I said, what do you study in there? She said, oh, I'm an aeronautical engineer. I'm working for JPL. And uh, you know, I'm coming out here to look for apartments. They hired me. And I work on little mini satellites and blah, blah, blah. I said, well, I'm an aerospace engineer. She said, really? Who do you work for? I said, no, no, Eros, E-R-O-S. <laughs> I teach men to communicate with women in a way where you realize you want more. <laughs> Do you hear the shift I did? I teach men to communicate with women in a way you realize you want more. So I'm going from, from women to her. Get? She said, you got to tell me more. And I said, well, imagine there's a sphere of energy between us, right? It's about the size of a basketball. It's empty. It's pure potential. I dribble it a little bit, I put some curiosity in it, and I bounce it over to you. You catch it, maybe you put some playfulness in it, and you bounce it back to me. Maybe I put, maybe I put some sexual energy into it. Did you hear the command? I bounce it over to you. And after about 10 rounds, that thing, that ball's turned into a sphere that's so big, it fills the space between us, and we both have our hands on it. And all it takes is just a moment, and that sphere surrounds us. So it's just you 
and I. And there's no one in the world but us. She's like, <laughs> can I give you my number? I said, sure. <laughs> so the idea of learning in a linear fashion, my point to her is when you bounce that ball to a woman, you never know what's going to come back. You don't know. The goddess chaos, Eris, Discordia, rules every interaction with women. It's chaotic. It's not linear. So you don't know what that person's, they could put in fear, they could put in sexual energy, they could put in playfulness. You don't know. By the way, who, is, who here has heard the term shit test? The woman gave me a shit test. Yep. Have you ever considered that shit test is just a woman's way of being cocky and playful? Hmm. They're just being, huh? Is that an auto response? Sometimes it's an auto response. Sometimes it's them just being playful. Sometimes it's a shit test. So, the programming that says to you that you do things in steps. First, you get the phone number. Then you go out on the date. Then you make your move. It's all nonsense, and it's not necessary. As long as you're buying into that programming, that programming is going to limit the behaviors that you can even think to choose. So we're going to do some hypnotic work with you to get some of that programming out of your head. Another example is the other night, thank, thank goodness, I caught the tail end, just the tail end of, um, of a movie on TV. It was with Ryan Reynolds and Amy Smart. And Ryan Reynolds was playing this you know, stud who was fucking lots of women. And he finds out his high school sweetheart is in town, and suddenly he turns into this human beggar, right? And there's a scene where he said, "You, I loved you since the third grade." And he storms out, and she punches him in the face. He storms out. Yes, yes, angel of getting laid, I am here. <laughs> yes, that was a hypnotic command to me from the CIA. <laughs> Where's JFK? What? <laughs> You're, I'm late? The grassy knoll is over there. Uh, and then uh, she punches him out, and then a, a guy comes up. He's the real jerk. Wow, I've always had the hots for you. Look at, look at you. Great boobs. And she says, you know, you're a great guy, but I just don't have those feelings. He said, are you kidding? And then he walks to another girl and squeezes her ass and says, come on, bitch. And so, and so, Ryan Reynolds goes home to California to his life of luxury and high, hot. And then you see him on a plane flying back to this little podunk town where it's snowing. And sure enough, he's knocking on her door. She opens the door. She slams it. He says, please, Debbie, please listen to me. I know I haven't been a very good friend, but I want you in my life. Even if it's just as a friend, I can't live without you. And I'm going, no, no. I'm pointing with my cats. I'm telling my cats, are you seeing this? And the cats are, <laughs> the cats are coughing up fur balls. And... But my point is, popular music, movies, TV, how do they portray us? How do they betray us as they portray us. Weak and needy. Like Either weak and needy or beggars or supplicators or bullies, stupid ass jerks. Now, if you get enough of this programming over 20, 30 years, that technical vocabulary of dating is going to be the choices you think you make. So one of the key principles I want to give you is to be able to walk the line between being uh, powerful enough to walk the line between being a jerk asshole who doesn't give a shit about her and the other side of the line to be a supplicating beggar, to walk through the world as a powerful man who wants the woman but is not invested in having her. That is, a, look at me, that is a very, very subtle and silent skill. It's not lightning bolts coming out of your fingers. It's not dramatic. It's not even something that people can verbalize it's there about you, but it's a very, very powerful skill set. You only get that when you throw away the old programming. So a great deal of the first morning of this is destroying how you think about that. Can you repeat that again? What Which bit? A great deal of what I'm going to be doing this morning is to destroy that. <laughs> like my 
Now, as you look at me and listen very carefully to what it is I have to say, I know that one of the reasons you came here is because there's something you really, really want to absorb and learn during the course of the seminar. Now, as I continue to share this life-changing material with you, I'm not sure just which parts you'll find yourself getting really, really excited about. But as that's happening more and more, can I ask you one favor? Will you promise me that you'll share the questions that naturally come up when a person can recognize an amazing transformation is taking place? Would you do that for me, everybody? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Would you? Yes. Now, did I say anything concrete? No. Can you remember even much of what I said? Vaguely. But did you get a sense that I was talking to you? Yes. I need verbal feedback. Yes. Yes. Yeah. All right. That way of talking is appealing to the unconscious mind. One of the things I'm going to be teaching you throughout the day and tomorrow and the evening session tonight, if you encourage me with your feedback, is what I call process language. Language that has no actual particular content, but triggers the other person's unconscious mind and imagination to fill in the blanks. Because you see, whatever you can get another person to imagine will be perceived by them as being their own thought, and therefore they won't resist it. This applies to every area of life, but most particularly seduction. So using confusion and vagueness. Confusion, vagueness, and implication. Confusion, vagueness, and implication are powerful tools for getting those panties down as well as your attitude, how you show up, which is another thing we're going to be talking about. Does that make sense? Yes. Now, would everyone turn to their neighbor and say their name and then say, fuck off? <laughs> I'm Robert. Fuck off. Yeah, I didn't feel it. Come on, bring it to my bed. Francisco, fuck off. Absolutely. You see? I'm already breaking your expectations. 